as I began work on my new Carmel painting, uh, it was so exciting because it was a misty morning that day. And uh, we showed up early in the morning in Carmel, partly because if you wait any longer, the tourists will crowd you out. You'll never get a chance to set your easel up. But it is fun to set up on the street and paint. There's just something about the energy. Now, when I set my easel up, I always look for a location that will give me the right ambient light so that I can see what I'm working on, but that will also give me a, uh, a view that is unobstructed that composes well. Now, I was very fortunate that morning because there was a car sitting right where I wanted to paint. And, you know, I just said, that's where I want to work. Well, Nanette and I, as we often do on these little challenges, we got together, grabbed our hands real quick, and said a little prayer. Lord, help that car to move. We, we need that parking space. And sure enough, it did. About 10 minutes later, as I was unfolding my easel, the parking space opened up. I set my easel right up there. I kept waiting for the meter maid to come by and mark my easel with a little chalk, you know, and, and chase me out of there after two hours, but she never did. And uh, it was wonderful because as I started to work, I got the sense of changing light. It was almost as though the morning was, was dawning and that mist was just hanging in the atmosphere. Now when you look at my plein air painting that was completed, I think you'll see some of that sense of atmospheric morning mood. I get excited when I think of Carmel almost like a second home. It's not too far from where we live, and uh, though I don't have a permanent home down there, it's wonderful to go down and visit Carmel. Uh, I've always told my wife, who knows, someday if we're just the two of us, wouldn't it be lovely to have a little cottage on the ocean where we could live for extended periods of time? And that's what I think of when I think of Carmel. It reminds me of a home away from home, a place to retreat and be with the beauty of nature.
Now on the surface you might look at a plein air painting and say, well that looks easy to do. I mean there's not much detail, it's much more thick paint, just a few brush strokes. But I can tell you from experience it is every bit as difficult and in some ways more difficult than working in the studio. Uh, you can't cover your mistakes. I mean you are working right from the subject and you have to get it all at once. In fact that's another word for plein air painting, they call it a la prima, which means all at once. You start at the top and work your way down and you can't make mistakes. You have to just make every brush stroke count. Plus there's the element of time. You only have a little bit of time before the light changes and so the goal is to quickly capture the impression. Uh, it's a real joy to do plein air paintings as an artist and it's something I uh, love to do when I travel and see new locations because it's a way of recording what I've experienced. I think about the Carmel uh, paintings I've done in the past and as I was daydreaming about this upcoming Carmel studio painting, I was thinking, now where could I set up my easel to get something I've never painted before? And it dawned on me, you know, all the Carmel street scenes I've done, none of them feature a view out towards the ocean. So what I did, we set up the easel on the corner of San Carlos and Ocean Avenue, but instead of looking east, in other words, inland, I was looking west. I was looking straight down Ocean Avenue out towards the ocean. Now in my painting uh, that I did on location, you will notice the trees that shroud Ocean Avenue. Well, of course, those have grown in over the years, but there was a time where you could actually see a glimpse of the ocean. So naturally, an artist is, has it easier than uh, a tree trimmer in real life, uh, but I'm going to trim those trees back a little bit and we're going to actually be able to see the ocean. Now in addition, I painted my subject uh, during early morning. That was of necessity because I wanted that hazy effect of light so that the light wouldn't change. Also, I didn't want to be chased off the street by tourists, as I mentioned earlier. Well, in my studio painting, uh, I'm going to paint it at sunset. It will be dusk. It will be that beautiful luminous sky uh, as we look out over the scene over Ocean Avenue and all the historic old buildings of Carmel. On the left, you will also notice our little bell tower. That is a monument of the old Mission Bell, and it's uh, one of the Carmel landmarks. That will be featured in the painting. In addition, I'm going to put a lot of vintage vehicles. Uh, now, I love to put vintage vehicles in my paintings. Most of you know I do that often. And it's kind of fun because I love old cars. And uh, so I'm going to be putting a few older vehicles in the painting. It will be the only street scene that I will do in the year 1999. Uh, so that means this is the last one for the millennium. So if you want to uh, get in on a street painting, a, a city scene work, uh, before the turn of the century, uh, this will be your chance to do it. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it for another reason, which is Carmel is a place for dreamers. It's a place for artists. I mean, for goodness sake, the city was founded with the idea of providing an environment for artists and poets and writers uh, to be together. And uh, the town still has a little bit of that feel. Uh, it is charming, the architecture is unique, but it is a place that really speaks of a love for art. And it will take many weeks to craft the final painting. There will be several figures. Of course, I'll use my own family as models for the painting. I always do. They come over and pose. Merritt has her costume. She loves to get dressed up. Chandler has her favorite little buggy she likes to push. And uh, sh they've all appeared in the paintings over the years. Uh, and now with our new little baby, Everett, I'd like to paint a painting where you can kind of glimpse the entire family.
Now, when I start work on the final Carmel painting, I take the materials that I have sketched and drawn and researched, and I combine them in my mind. But I want to make a very important point. When I work on a plein air study, the goal is to record what is there. That is an observational approach to painting. I'm always asked this question, what's the difference between plein air style and the studio style? Well, in the studio, your imagination is kicking in. I mean, you're at work on that painting, and at least the way I work, and my kind of style, which is very idealistic, I get all my emotions involved, and I you know, kind of daydream about these little places within the canvas, and I put the little pathways winding into the distance, and I envision myself going over that hilltop into the valley below. Uh, it's more emotion tied. It's more of your sentiment, of your heart, of your uh, romantic view of the world that comes into play. Your imagination, really, is the key when you're working in the studio. Now, in the plein air style, for me at least, I view that as a very observational approach, what we might call a visualist uh, approach to picture making, to recreate the visual experience. And just think of it, you're not, those aren't leaves of trees and bits of rock that you're putting on the canvas, that's thick blobs of paint. I mean, there's, you know, you're reproducing the three-dimensional world with something very foreign to what you're trying to recreate. I mean, air is not composed of paint. It is composed of atmosphere and, you know, the atoms of, of the air itself. It is not composed of paint. So when you put a paint stroke down, the challenge is to recreate the visual experience of what you've seen. You have to look at the world and take these juicy strokes of brushwork and have them somehow combine in such a way that it fools the eye into feeling that they're looking at the world. 